This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1932. You won't lose all of your money investing if you take this advice by Robert Farrington of thecollegeinvestor.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This show is actually one of multiple shows in our network covering different topics like personal development, health, and relationships. So if you like narration-style podcasts, be sure to search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this and check out our other shows. But for now, let's get right to today's post as we optimize your life. You Won't Lose All Your Money Investing If You Take This Advice by Robert Farrington of thecollegeinvestor.com. I'm a big believer in starting to invest early. It's one of the smartest ways to build wealth. But when I talk to millennials, fear is holding them back from starting to invest. The number one fear I hear almost every week is this. I'm afraid to start investing because I'm afraid of losing all my money. Quote, my biggest fear right now that is holding me back from investing is the possibility of losing the little money that I have. Eileen G. Quote, I've talked myself out of just starting numerous times because of the fear of losing money. Jared L. Quote, my biggest fear is losing my investment. I have very little to start with and I'm afraid of making a wrong move. Jennifer P. As you can see, people are afraid of losing money investing and that's valid. You can lose money investing, but to lose all of your money That's pretty rare and hard to do, especially if you're focused on investing versus trading. Losing all of your money investing is hard to do. The first thing to know about investing is that you can lose money. It's as simple as that. You could invest today and see your portfolio drop tomorrow. But to lose everything, that's really hard to do. In the worst stock market crash during the Great Depression, the stock market lost 89% of its value. In the most recent stock market crash of 2008-2009, the stock market lost 54% of its value from market top to market bottom. While both of these are huge drops, it's important to remember three things. Number one, in both cases, the stock market didn't go to zero, meaning if you invested in the total market, you wouldn't have lost everything. Number two, In both cases, the stock market returned to the pre-crash level years later. Yes, years later, but it bounced back. And number three, both of these events and almost all market events happen over time. These huge drops didn't happen in one day. Yes, there were some 10% or more days, but that return is over the course of about a year, meaning you could have sold your positions and lost much less money. The point is, you have to be completely amiss to lose all your money investing. You have history, time, and strategy all on your side to avoid losing money when investing. Strategies to protect yourself and your money. Even though you have the facts about losing your money, the horror stories always stand out. In every instance where you've heard about someone losing all their money, it was because they didn't have a strategy or follow some common sense strategies. Here are the key strategies to protect yourself and your money. Number one, keep an emergency fund in cash. The first thing to make sure you have in place to protect yourself is an emergency fund in cash. This should be enough money to cover six to 12 months of your expenses, and it shouldn't be invested in stocks or the stock market. The reason? If the stock market does crash and you lose 50% of your portfolio, your six-month emergency fund just became a three-month emergency fund. Not a good idea. This is just cash to protect yourself. I know it's frustrating to have a pile of money sitting there and not earning anything more than interest, but think of it like an insurance policy that doesn't cost you. It's there to protect you should you need it. Number two. Maintain a diversified portfolio that matches your correct allocation. Second, you need to make sure that you have a diversified portfolio. This means holding different stocks and bonds in different industries or areas. When events happen, it's possible that individual companies and even sectors suffer. 
For example, if you owned Enron stock, that company did go bankrupt and its stock went to zero. However, the entire stock market didn't, and even other energy companies didn't. It was just one company. But for the people that held 100% of their investments in Enron, they lost everything. That's why you diversify. How do you diversify? You create an asset allocation that matches your needs, and then you build a portfolio around it. It sounds complex, but it isn't. All it means is picking investments that make sense for you and are made up of a bunch of different things that aren't related. Number three, monitor your positions. Next, you need to monitor your investment positions and follow what's happening in the stock market. You don't need to do this every day, but you should do it often enough so that you know what's happening with your money. I recommend that you look at your investments at least weekly to see how they're performing. If you have a good asset allocation and feel comfortable with the strategy behind it, then you likely only need to trade positions every six months to one year. If you don't have a good system to track your investments, look at a free tool like Personal Capital. They keep a dashboard of all your investment accounts in one place, so you can always see how they're performing, and it's free. And number four, when uncomfortable, seek advice. Finally, if you're uncomfortable with your investment performance, consider seeking out professional investment advice. You can talk to a fee-based financial planner as they will have no vested interest in the investments you have other than to help you navigate and be successful. If your investments give you an uneasy feeling, this could be a great option. You just listened to the post titled, You Won't Lose All of Your Money Investing, if you take this advice by Robert Farrington of thecollegeinvestor.com. I hear often how worried people are about losing money with investing. The financial services industry has done a great job of making investing look complex and fueling those fears. The thing that helps me navigate this is only investing money that I won't need for the next 10 years and expecting the market corrections that are inevitable. Remember this, When your portfolio is down, you don't actually lose money until you sell your investments and lock in those losses. The way I see it, the fact that I'm a long-term investor is intrinsically tied to my ability to handle those inevitable drops in my portfolio. I accept that investing in the stock market requires a tolerance for volatility, especially when you have a 100% stock portfolio like I do. I deal with the volatility in two key ways. Firstly, I just don't watch the roller coaster ride of the stock market very closely. While Robert recommends looking at your investments weekly in this article, I don't do this because I'm a passive investor in low fee total market index funds. If you choose an investment strategy that's more active, you certainly need to look at it more often. But history has shown that active investors don't have better outcomes than passive investors. So I personally don't see why I would bother with it. I look at the money I invest like a tax I'm paying to my future self. I see that money as not really mine, meaning that present day Diana has no claim to it. So whether my portfolio is up or down doesn't really have an effect on me right now and I can happily ignore it. Secondly, as recommended in this article, I pair my investments with a really strong cash position. Most people think that I'm holding way too much cash because I have about a year of expenses just sitting there earning no meaningful interest. But for me, holding this much cash provides extra assurance that whatever financial needs arise, it's unlikely I will need to tap into my investments anytime soon. And so I can truly leave them to grow over the long term. A passive investment style alongside some blissful ignorance and long term focus makes the natural and expected volatility of the stock market much more tolerable for me. And that's a wrap for another Monday show. Have a great rest of your day and start to your week. And I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.